Hello and welcome to Miss Hannah Loves Grammar. In this video we'll be answering the question, how can an apostrophe show possession? Well, as you may already know, possession is when something belongs to a person, thing in the sentence. And possession with punctuation is demonstrated through the apostrophe and an S. We do this to the person or thing that owns something in the sentence. Let me give you an example. Callum's bag has many pockets in it. The apostrophe S after his name, Callum, makes it clear that the bag belongs to him. We understand the bag is his possession and the possessive apostrophe reminds us of that. Let's take a more complicated one that isn't so clearly a person because it's a thing. Society's obsession on wealth does not help individuals value their own well-being. A common grammatical mistake might be to refer to society's obsession. This would be incorrect though, as we are referring to just one society, the society, and it has no plural. Because I'm referring to one society's obsession with or in this particular case, wealth. So it's a possessive because I'm drawing your attention to the fact that it's an obsession that society has. It's that obsession that deserves the apostrophe S on society. So we know it's the problem, if you like, the obsession of society. The issue or the idea belongs to society. Another thing to consider is that an apostrophe can also be used to indicate possession with a noun that is a plural, and as I'll go on to in a moment, also ending in an S, but it's slightly different. If I'm referring to an, a, a situation or a thing that has more than one person involved or more than one creature involved, I will tend to add an apostrophe after the final S that the word ends with. Let me give you an example. Tigers' lunches are often days apart as once they have feasted, they are satisfied. I'm referring to more than one tiger. I'm referring to more than one lunch. But I am really showing you that the lunches belong to the tigers. Hence why I'm referring to tigers, so more than one tiger, and that ends in an S, because it's a plural. But it's also a possessive, because I've added an apostrophe after it to remind you that those lunches belong to the tigers. So the lunches belonging to the tigers is why we have that possessive apostrophe. But I also just mentioned to you that if the name of something ends in an S, you can either use the last letter of the word S, um, and then the apostrophe straight after it, or it's actually grammatically correct to do something slightly different, which is to use the last S of the word, an apostrophe, and then an S. Let me demonstrate the difference. I could say, Charles's parents are happy. And here you can see I've just used the S and an apostrophe. However, it would still be grammatically correct for me to say, Charles's parents are happy. I even say it in the same way, but there is a distinct difference. If we were playing spot the difference right now, you would notice there's an additional S after the apostrophe in my second example. It's important to know that grammatically it's accurate to use either of these when we're dealing with a name of something or someone that ends in an S and we're referring to that individual or thing having possession over something else or something. Be aware of that because that forms a big part of grammatical mistakes around the apostrophe. Now it's your turn. For each of the three sentences, consider if the use of the apostrophe is correct or needs reworking. Hit pause if you need thinking time. So, how did you get on? Genesis's plans for the summer are very exciting. In this case, I'm referring to the plans of Genesis. I know that they're hers because 
there's an apostrophe after her name because it ends in an S, that is why there's just an apostrophe after her name. This is correct. I know that the plans are those of Genesis and that she owns them. Moving on, in number two, there is only one minute difference between the sentences. And that is that after the apostrophe, there is an additional S. So in this sentence, the plans are still Genesis's and they still belong to her. So the possessive apostrophe is also correct. It's important for us to remember that names ending in an S can have an apostrophe after them and also, equally valid, have an apostrophe and then an S. In English grammar, both are fine. So examples one and two are absolutely spot on. Finally, parents' expectations are naturally on their children succeeding. So here we're referring to the expectations that belong to many parents. I'm not talking about one particular parent, I'm talking about all parents, it would seem, or many. So that is why I have the plural parents with a apostrophe after it, because those expectations belong to many parents. So this sentence is equally grammatically accurate. The power of a possessive apostrophe is that it identifies for us as readers who the idea or thing belongs to. It helps drive the power of the sentence. If I know that it's the parents' expectations that are naturally on their children succeeding, I know that the subject of my sentence is really on those parents. It's a powerful tool that must be used appropriately. So it's worth revisiting this video if a few of those rules have gone awry from your head already. Best of luck. Why not subscribe to Miss Hannah Loves Grammar for all things English, literary and grammatical.